Greetings and salutations everybody. I wanted to go over the difference between a cheap multimeter and a more expensive multimeter. If you were just a hobbyist or uh, even a professional really, both of these will effectively get the job done. They can measure current, they can measure voltage, both DC and AC, they can measure resistance, and they can check diodes and give you a beep if you have connectivity. The difference as far as specs, immediately you'll notice between this cheap one and this more expensive one, which this more expensive one is a Fluke 117, and the cheap one is a Wave Tech Meter Man 15 XP. The Fluke is able to measure 10 amps, and it's fused at that, where the Meter Man can only measure two amps, which I'm not sure if they make something that goes higher for this, but in this range, between the cheap and the more expensive, those are just sort of the things you're gonna notice. Another example is the connections are only rated for category three at 300 volts for the, the meter man, whereas category three goes up to 600 volts on the fluke. Right away, going more expensive, you get more features and you get more functionality of the same features that both of these products have. Now, just because something is inexpensive or cheap doesn't mean you lose out on every functionality. This one still has a, I, I'm not sure if it's considered premium, but a feature where it allows you to sense AC voltage without actually touching it. And it's making a noise and a little red light is illuminating when it gets close to AC current. You'll notice this one didn't force me to turn it on in order to do that. This one does. In order to do that, you have to actually go to a setting on here, which is the volt alert. And you do have to go one direction. So this has the same thing. And then the volt alert flickers and you know to go and check it. And I won't move the camera there, but it noticed the AC power as well without making contact. Fun feature, fun little more or less premium feature, we'll say. The next thing I'll point out to is with the cheap one, you get more inexpensive leads and connectors. As you notice, these develop a sort of memory, the cable, as you can see, it was wrapped around there. They sort of retain that shape. It's most evidently shown by just holding the cable up and you can still see that the bend forms and, and doesn't droop right where I'm grabbing my fingers, like these. Well, these are made of a different rubber, they won't develop a memory, and they just more or less feel better in that regard. The connectors here have a nice spot to grip onto when you pop them in, so all's good there. These are, the grips are not as far out, you have to grip them right there to pop it in place. The more inexpensive one is just the 300 volt category three, so they're lackluster. The protection on the tips, in order to get that category three, you have to have protection up on the tips, uh, is just heat shrink, essentially. And if you want to push this into an electrical outlet or use it in a little more deeper setting, you just essentially push past this, and after a while it gets destroyed and not as usable. So the category three kind of is, is thrown out the window, but still usable. It's just, it'll break a little sooner. It does still come with a nice little kickstand, as you can see here, and it even has a little lip right there. So if you had a magnetic accessory, you could still hook it up. Now, of course, this one won't come with that magnetic accessory, whereas the Fluke, or the more premium one, will come with that accessory. And then going right back to the comparison of the category three is there is a little twist part here. Whereas instead of having heat shrink, you can simply twist the knob and get more metal exposed for if you don't necessarily need that category rating and you really wanna get those probes pushed in somewhere. The protection is hard plastic. You won't be able to damage that. And you can even push down on that and it'll have it switch for you. So. Very convenient that way. The next thing, the dials. In order to turn this one on, you have to grab from the top and twist and go to the de desired setting you need. The voltages are still automatic. 
the current you do have to set if you want to see micro milli or regular amp for the DC AC current uh, same deal you have to select sort of the range is it, do, it does at least tell you it's in microamps and milli and regular the meter here you have two options to move do uh, motion to do your selections and one is the same before which is grabbing that or you can do one-handed operation same hand that you're holding it and rotate with your one thumb off to the side a nice feature oftentimes overlooked this one though you could potentially do that if you were really trying it's much more force to do so one-handed operation you'll also notice the current is automatic for both AC and DC you don't have to select micro milli or regular amp range and when you do that when you do the measurement it will just tell you the units off to the right instead of making sure you're on the right switch at the time that is one thing that is very common among the inexpensive multimeters versus the premium the premium most of the settings are automatic and based upon what you're measuring it will adjust for you so that's very nice the extra feature you get on the fluke versus the meter man in this case is you can measure capacitance with this meter it does have another feature with auto v low z i'm not actually sure what that is i've never used it all the years i've had this one um, and as you can tell by how nice both of these look they mostly just live in a drawer and i break them out as needed next thing is the physical body of both of these products the more expensive one doesn't have an obvious rubber bumper it actually does as you can see the outer shell is actually a rubber protector but they made it look in a way that it's not very obvious right out of the gate whereas this one it's very obvious that it has a little rubber bumper uh, within there both of them still require you to take the rubber bumpers off and swap out the 9 volt or add the 9 volt battery this one like i said comes with features this one happens to come with a magnet but really all that product is is something that goes in through this loop this slides down or up and you put it through the loop the cheap one still has that little hook though it doesn't lock in place accuracy between the two um, I'm not going to proof that out but whenever I measure if you ever measure anything it'll measure AC fairly close DC what have you these aren't calibrated you could send them out to be calibrated you could even get that more or less calibrator checked and it would tell you how close or off it is but they're going to both be within millivolts very easily it's not hard to make the base functionality of these products work and one thing i forgot to mention the fluke does have a backlight whereas the meter man does not but there you go that's the difference between a cheap and expensive meter they both will get the job done one has a few more features one feels a little more luxurious but other than that They'll both get you where you want to be. All right, till next time, I'm the Ill-Informed Human. Goodbye.